first of all we boot the PC choose your appropriate BIOS button to enter your BIOS setup enter the settings as per your BIOS it depends Every some BIOSes have delete key to enter the settings some BIOSes have um, F12 and so and some laptops being ridiculous they even keep a function button so just choose your appropriate button and get into the BIOS choose settings boot preferably turn off go to BIOS um, boot, boot, uh, boot mode select UEFI only Pre it's always better only to keep UEFI because legacy plus UEFI Apple doesn't like it then make your appropriate settings and ensure that your secure boot is disabled check it everywhere it's preferable to keep IGD multi monitor enabled because um, we don't have the kicks for the external graphics card driver in this case we do but normally you don't so it's always preferable to keep it enabled and initial graphics adapter to IGD so save your settings in our case we haven't made any changes so we don't have to enter F11 to choose a boot menu in this case my USB drive is SanDisk so we just choose that the clover menu loads now let's choose options why options because in our case we have the kex for our external graphics driver so I'm just simply going to go ahead and load that we are really thankful to Olarella for providing us this tool so as to convert our Mac image into a USB bootable one so let's proceed and let the magic begin So basically Olarilla is a group which just loves making hackintoshes out of existing Mac images. They prefer to use do this because they want people to experience how does a Mac look to a standard PC user which is normally not accessible because you got to buy a Mac to use it. Um, they have a really great forum from where you can actually download the disk image which exists on their site as a torrent if you don't know how to create one and if you do want to know how to create one if you own a, and if you own a map there will be another video in the description below so meanwhile this Mac logo looks really amazing on a traditional desktop Ta-da! the language screen is right in front of you and we are more than happy to proceed with the Mac insertion as of it I only understand English and yes do remember if you scroll with the mouse wheel, you got to scroll it the opposite way because that's how Mac works right now. You can fix that later, but for now, let's just simply scroll upward so that it goes downward and scroll downward to go upward. The weirdest flex ever. Now, before we proceed for installing Mac, I need to show you one more thing. Right now, our hard disk is empty, but what if you had an existing Windows installation? What do we do? Click here, go to utilities, disk utility, and now always prefer to show all devices because not all of us are pros and however professional you may be you always do mistakes so let's why not go do it the better way here since our case the SSD drive is a Kingston we are going to format this but for example if you have multiple drives in our case we do have multiple drives but we have disconnected the same to avoid the chances of accidental erasure so here we choose Kingston click erase first time when we did erase that time there was this NTFS option so what does the utility do is simply you select APFS rename it to Mac OS in this case select GUID part this option wasn't available earlier so we simply erase and again erase it again during this time you will get the third option to select now you see this this is after conversion from NTFS to Apple based formats now again we choose APFS we choose GUID partition map and not Apple partition map because what if you were to install Windows in the near future it's always better to keep a format a partition map that Windows understands erase it again and we are good to go again if you want to create a windows partition well beforehand simply select the drive 
select partition uh, don't don't use this checkbox it's literally very contextual and partition here it's as simple as adding a plus button renaming it to windows instead of APFS we choose expat because that's what windows understands amongst the formats given here once you put a windows usb bootable drive reformat this partition named windows to ntfs and you're done right now we are not interested in this and so we are not going to do it apply cancel it and we are good to go here let's continue accept the terms and conditions select your drive which you created earlier in this case it's mac os if you want you can customize but right now this is the only option available so continue let the installation begin so once the setup's done system has restarted yep that's what you're waiting for now normally the usb drive is where it is booted from but ideally if you want to do that inside the hard drive we'll show you later how it's done for now let's continue here choose options again configurations config 2 return return and go Choose a country, in this case we are Indian, so let's go ahead. Choose the right keyboard layout. Ideally, it just chooses the right keyboard layout for you. And if it doesn't, it'll tell you how to. Data and privacy, cool. Don't transfer anything right now. Yep, accept the terms and conditions but it's always good to read too. I'm too lazy. Agree. Yep, that's me. And let's set a password. Some random hint. If you want to, let's continue. So, the really long iCloud process, what does it involve? Normally, it involves syncing your desktop with your iCloud account, um, allowing it to sync your desktop items to your iCloud, and of course, this thing. Would you like to use iCloud Keychain on this Mac? Let's set it up later. Give it, give it access to locations, analytics, and whatnot. If you're real paranoid, which I am, I'm going to go customize settings, enable localization services, share Mac analytics, share crash data. That's that. Now, this is what iCloud does, technically. I'm not interested in it, so let's go ahead. Whatever is your choice, I guess dark is the new bright. Let's go ahead and that's it. That's your iMac, well and ready to go. And it's working as a Hackintosh. As I said earlier, the keyboard layout, Mac couldn't figure out by itself, so let's see what to do. Let's continue. Press the appropriate keys, and it is understood what to do. Go ahead, right here, right now. That's your GPU up, you wanna know more, Check about this Mac. Yep, Mac OS Mojave, iMac Retina 5K, 3.5 gigs, 8 gigs of RAM. But yeah, graphics has got serious issues, bruv. Serious issues. Displays up, storage, memory, support, service. Fine. Now, right now you see there's a graphical issue which can be sorted out by inserting the appropriate kex or even better, allowing injection of certain kex inside Clover itself. Before we do that, it's very important that we transfer the boot control from this USB drive to the internal hard drive. How is that done? Open your Olarilla drive 
copy this files folder to your desktop. Yep, there you go. I always like it to auto snap it, so let's do it better. Yeah, you see these kinds of tools? These are the real god mode tools for any Hackintosh you could ever have. TextMate is your text editor for codes and whatnot. Kex installer, Kex utility installs all your drivers, which are normally known as Kex in a Mac. Um, Clover Configurator, Clover Configurator Pro, you have a choice, either of the two, just do good. There you go, accept the deal. Let's go ahead. Disk 0 S1 not mounted. This is from where? This is your USB drive. If it's green, means Clover is actively running from here. This is inactive, that means it's your internal hard drive and you gotta transfer your control there. Mount, simple as that. Open, EFI, Apple is not where you copy it. Open your other drive as well. Mount this guy too. A separate EFI partition opens in the desktop. Here you go. EFI folder, Clover. Copy this Clover folder along with boot. Copy, replace Clover. That's it. That's all from this side. Now, you simply eject, unmount, unmount. That's it. And Clover configurations are done for now. What remains next is searching for appropriate drivers. In this case, let's start with the audio because I already have them here. First thing that we have to do is install the drivers that we already have. For example, voodoo, voodoo hda.kext. Now you will be wondering how to install kext file. Do we have to copy to Clover partition? Do we have to copy to library extension partition and all that? No, you don't have to. You just open this files folder, open kext open kex utility shown here and let this guy do the job for you yep that's what we are waiting for this kex utility is happening now once this loading ring is done loading we simply drag and drop this here as said over here drag files on window to process them enter your password again and it will pass the stuff So, Kex utility is done processing, fixing information, fixing permissions and whatnot. So, let's drag this audio driver, enter the password, and it's going to do the magic for you. Yep, it's done processing the package, and we are good. Audio is ready. After a long term of fixes and bugs, we finally found out that the solution to the NVIDIA problem was inside the folder named Files in Olarilla Mojave and we really have a great shout out to them for helping us out here. This command, something called NVIDIA patch error command, it's simply when you run the code, it asks you for a pseudo password and does the magic of installing the NVIDIA drivers. Although graphics acceleration is not technically available to Mojave from NVIDIA end, we might still expect Apple to release a better version so that it does the same. Until then, see you next time. Take care and stay rad.